Today we're going to put this fine looking aluminum performance radiator from Alloy Works in this 2000 Pontiac Bonneville. Now for today's radiator project, I'm going to use my three favorite tools. A hammer, a pipe wrench, and a chainsaw. The best tools to ever work on a car with. I built this engine for this Bonneville about a year and a half, two years ago, I think in 2021. And we didn't go with a new radiator when we put it in. Uh, we couldn't find one at the time, but the customer wanted to go with a nice aluminum performance radiator. And uh, of course I reached out to Alloy Works and they had one for it. So let's take a look at the quality of the radiator and how well it fits in the car. Okay, the first thing you want to look for on a, any radiator, no matter which one you buy, is to make sure that it has these uh, connectors for the transmission cooling lines because it's a snap-in type fit. And then inspect all the welds. These are your mounting uh, brackets that stick off the radiator. Make sure your petcock's in. You'll definitely want to go back and just make sure that it's tight because sometimes they just stick them in. Because those fittings there are not tied, they'll have to be tightened up. And they even provide a nice brand new radiator cap. Okay, now your next step is you're going to be want to make sure that the radiator matches before you stick. try to stick it in. Make sure everything looks the same as far as brackets, fittings, position of uh, uh, nipples and things like that. On these 10th uh, generation body styles, you have to pull the upper radiator support, which makes it kind of a tight fit to slide the radiator down in there. So uh, definitely want to make sure at the measurements that everything's going to fit. You want to measure your mounting studs to make sure that the width is the same on both radiators. It can vary about a quarter of an inch. The rubber will give that much. As you can see, it's just about a quarter of an inch variance between the, the two of them. So this should fit in there just fine. Plus the studs are tapered so it'll kind of find its way in the hole. Then you want to measure, make sure the width of the radiator is going to work. And it, I've already measured it. It looks like the old radiator is actually just a little bit wider than the new one. So that will make the fit a little bit better. And you want to measure the height of the radiator. And I think these are actually almost a spot on match. It's going to come out a really good match. It's not going to stick up too high or too little. So we're good. And then you're going to want to make sure that any place on the radio, on the old radiator that has a clip to try to pull them off and save them because you can see in the new radiator it does not have a clip so you want to put the clip on it, transfer it. And also look for things like this, little hooks because uh, if their fans will go down into that. You'll notice on the original radiator, um, I'm sure this is probably for some other type of a cooling device or something on the car that this one doesn't come with, but this is the plug. It just has a little snap catch on there and plugs in that. You're going to want to transfer it and possibly go ahead and change O-ring out too while you're at it and put it in the new one. And you'll see here again, you've got clips on the front side of the radiator that you're going to have to remove and put on to this. Okay, it's important, but these are not were not tight, so I went ahead and tightened them. These are 19 millimeters on, on this one and a 14 millimeter or a 9 16 on that petcock and it was already tight these have tightened up their o-ring uh, seals so now the next thing to do is to transfer those clips over to this radiator okay the proper way to normally do to get the rate the antifreeze out of this uh, system is to pull all the plastic sheets off the bottom and stuff which means you have to lay up underneath the car and if it's still got the factory clips and stuff but this one has been modified a few times and has other things in it so it was actually just easier to reach down here undo the clamp pull the hose and put a big pan underneath to catch all the antifreeze but that's up to you you can do one or the other but the petcock is on the bottom underneath all the plastic sheeting all right we're just going to loosen these remove 
remove these. It makes it real handy when you work on these cars to get you a magnetic cup. Slide these to the side. These are the mounts that hold the radiator in at the top. Get this rubber off. All it does is stick down in the slot of the radiator. So the Alloy Works radiator, it's actually a real, it's actually really a performance radiator. It's a three core where this one's a single core. And so it's going to be the exact width of this tank. So it's going to be all the way to here and here. Which will, when you mount it, it'll actually set your uh, fans out just a little bit more towards the engine. But you've got plenty of room. It's not by much. It won't affect how the uh, condenser fits in at all because it sits to the outside of the tank. It's just something to make notice. So when you stick, stick it in there, you're not going to like, oh no, it's not going to work. If you'll notice, these upper mounts for the uh, to hold the radiator in, they are marked left and right. So if you do just happen to get them confused, know which side of the car is left and which side is right. And it's based on when you're sitting in the car, not looking at the front. In order to get the bolts out for this uh, upper radiator support, they're all going to come out fairly easy, but this box is in the way of probably these two because the bolts are so long. So we're going to have to remove this box. Or try to slide it out of the way. That may be enough to get it free. We'll try it here in a second. Bolts here are 15 millimeters. I didn't do anything elaborate except just kind of push the wiper filler tube out of the way. It's flexible enough. And you'll have to use a ratchet or wrench. You can just replay around with the repositioning of this without having to disconnect everything. It makes life a little bit easier. The only thing is when you go back together, you want to make sure this seal, this foam seal is back in place of this. At the very bottom, and hard to see, there's one 10 millimeter bolt you've got to undo that's got the line pinned to the, I think the uh, cooling fan shroud. Now when doing little bolts like this, sometimes it's helpful if you get the right length extensions. Not everybody has a whatever that is, an inch and a half ex length extension. But I'll try to find one and put down in the description when you get one. I got that loose. And the wires. Alright. You gotta have to unplug both fans and it's got a clip and the way that's all this plastic's in the way you can't get your hand on that release so it's best just to slide a screwdriver into the side. You don't know real forcing and just kind of twist a little bit to get it to release and then pull. Now we're going to remove the, the fans in the trowel. Just takes a little wiggling and jiggling to get that out. Now it's time to try to go ahead and disconnect the uh, AC condenser. This one's going to be the funnest one to get to, this bolt here, because you can't see it and there's not a lot of room to actually get a ratchet or anything else on it. I 
it helps to be able to push the radiator forward. That's why it's better to go ahead and remove the upper radiator support and everything in the way so you can actually push this thing around a little bit to get the bolts. The trick was was just to get it. It actually helped if you had somebody to help you push this radiator forward while you work the bolt. But it's just a matter of using your fingers and a ratchet until you actually get it out. This is going to be your hardest obstacle in the whole thing. Now, once you get the this release, you're going to have to lift it up, separate it from the radiator. You may have to do that a couple of times. It's out of it, but it'll probably catch you trying to pull it back out. In the factory, these usually have spring clips, and there's tools for that. Luckily, this one's already been changed out. So it helps if you've got a nice long extension and a swivel socket, but uh, the screwdriver will work as well. It doesn't have to come off. You just got to have it where it just gets out of the way. Pulling lines could be your ne next obstacle. It's got a little plastic shield that covers up the clips. And there's a tool made for this, but you can either use the tool or you can use a, a, a pick or a screwdriver to get these loose. You want to try to slide these back without tearing them up because they do kind of help protect that connection. Put a clamp on this hose right here because this jug is higher than the radiator basically so if you undo this it's going to empty the jug out all over the place so I'll put this clamp to pinch the hose off it's actually made for hoses pinch them off Get in, you might be to go with it. Go ahead and film. Now putting this one in is going to be a little bit harder due to the fact that this aluminum radiator is not going to flex and give like the plastic one did. Make sure your condenser's in the slot, which I don't think it is on this one, is it? There it goes. This bolt's going to be the hardest one to get in, so it might be easier to use a magnet to hold it while you're trying to get it in the hole. With this radiator being aluminum like it is, it's not flexible like that plastic one, so therefore it makes it harder to get the bolts in and out. Uh -uh. Yeah, now with the wider radiator in, you can still see it's got 
finger clearance between the two. The most it's going to do is push the uh, cooling fans towards the engine side, but not by much, enough to make a difference. You'll want to push in the uh, lower transmission cooling line before you put the uh, radiator hose on. It's really hard. These, these are very difficult to push in. <coughs> After you get the lower uh, cooling line for the transmission connected, go ahead and connect up the uh, radiator hose here and put your clamp on and tighten it. You'll want to do this before you put the fan dry on because otherwise it's going to be really hard to get to. Next you're going to want to go ahead and get that upper uh, transmission cooling line put in. You just have to push it until it snaps in and then it's good. Put the, don't forget to put your protector over it. Next you want to connect your coolant reservoir uh, bottle hose to the radiator. Next step is to put the electric fan and shroud back in. It turns out that the only complication with this is the radiator uh, fan shroud will have to be modified to fit this larger size radiator. The uh, factory fan shroud, this bottom lip sticks out a little bit too far and I have to be cut off probably about a quarter of an inch for these pieces here to slide into the little uh, hooks on the radiator. Now I'm using an, a pneumatic cutoff wheel here but you can use an electric one. There's several different means of way of cutting this with you know, different types of saws, but it's plastic, it's easy, pretty easy to cut. And what I'm cutting off is very minuscule, so it's not really gonna hurt anything. The radiator itself could probably be bought with the fans because Alloy Works do, does sell the radiators with fans, so that's something that is an option. But we want to go ahead and use the factory uh, setup. You can see here how much was cut off. It was, like I said, is about a quarter of an inch and that allowed the uh, hooks to catch on the fan shroud. But to be a high performance radiator, we actually, I think, ordered a single core, but I think this is the only thing they had was a three core, which will give this car a lot of cooling ability. But because of that, I had to space, yeah, come on. I had to put a nut to make a spacer to keep the fan, fan shroud from bumping into the actual fins of the radiator. Of course, you can also just cut this. It's up to you, whatever one you want to do. It doesn't hurt either way, it still pulls the air just fine. No matter if you do use an electric or a pneumatic uh, air ratchet or electric ratchet or cordless or whatever, I always go back over your bolts by hand, make sure they're correctly tight. Don't forget to hook up the uh, electric connectors on the fans. You might need those. It is the factory radiator has a little groove in this and this snaps into it. This lays here. This doesn't have anything to hold it. So the solution would be put a black weather strip adhesive on it and just let it stick to it to hold it in place. It's not going to go anywhere anyways, but just for extra precautions. There'd be a radiator there now. On the 3.8 system, the way water can get, the coolant can get trapped in the block, 
they provided a bleed screw at the top. So when it starts to get warm, you can put the cap on and then uh, crack the bleed screw and you'll hear a lot of air come out. And you may have to repeat this several times of putting antifreeze in it, let air come out with antifreeze in it until it just has a steady stream of antifreeze coming out then you can close it off. It's, um, you have to hold a, the bigger size with a 10 millimeter inch and that's a seven millimeter. As you can see, even after installation and the modifications to the fan shroud, it looks as factory as it did before we even started. I thought the radiator fit in there very, very, very excellent. I put in uh, aftermarket radiators that didn't fit in this good. This one actually slid down in there better. It looks better. It's a bigger core radiator, definitely going to uh, allow better cooling uh, functionality. Uh, overall, other than the modifications I had to do to the fan shroud and that uh, top rubber piece, this was actually a really great job and actually if we had uh, got the radiator with the fan shrouds already made into it uh, it wouldn't have been an issue at all but even what we had to do was no problem whatsoever i have put many of these alloy work brand radiators or aluminum radiators in these in vehicles and one thing i'm really impressed with is every one of them comes with an aluminum a billet aluminum uh, made uh, radiator cap and they're great uh, I think some of the poundage on them are some high, but I think this car actually came with a 19 pound cap from factory, so that's one reason why they did that. I've put some on trucks, I think some of those were rated at 16 or 17, so they do match the poundage uh, per the vehicle. So that's pretty much how you put a radiator in a 2000 Pontiac Bonneville for this, or these uh, 10th generation body styles. The job wasn't that bad, it took about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes, something like to do the whole job. I also wanted to make note of the uh, performance. Now, in this case, this radiator that was in it was leaking. It was, you know, it had been in there for many miles and it was leaking. So just adding a new radiator is a big difference. But uh, the temperature gauge usually would run about a half, maybe just a little over a half. I think it was reading 200. And uh, now that we've put this radiator in it, he's driven it for about a week. He hasn't brought it back to me for me to video the gauge. That's one bad thing about doing these things for customers is I don't always have access to the cars after I work on them but he's telling me now that it's sitting right below uh, the half mark 200 so and he drives it regularly and drives it hard sometimes so this radiator is doing a whole lot better than the original radiator these alloy works radiators they are great I, like I said I haven't had one yet that's come back or has been a problem they fit great they look great so I highly recommend them and for every tool or uh, product or anything that I've been talking about or even recommending in this video be sure to look down in the description a lot of people will send me comments asking about what I said or what where, are, where do you get this everything that I've talked about that you could possibly buy or look for is down in the description and right now if you order an alloy works radiator if you use the uh, discount code rod rads that's what I'll put down in the description you can get a discount on the radiator so I hope you found this video helpful and if you have any questions be sure to leave me a comment and be sure to subscribe because I'm always coming up with something new and fun to work on. See you in the next one.